everyone, and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting tips and tricks developing a company template. My name is Ashley, and with me today are my colleagues Dave and Nauman, who's actually going to be presenting to you. So thank you to everyone for taking time out of your day to be here. We're happy to have you. So a little bit about us. Um, Nauman is our uh, AutoCAD expert elite and also our presenter for today. Um, Dave is a technical support specialist based out of our Manchester office, and I am also a technical support specialist in Boston. So before we get started, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window and we'll answer them as best we can. Um, we'll also address questions that we're not able to cover uh, after the webinar. This session will be recorded and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, and of course the chat window. Um, here on the left, we have some upcoming webinar topics through September and October. You can watch past webinars at any time on YouTube. And if you'd like, you can also download the data sets from Box to follow along. Um, so here we have our Autodesk Knowledge Network. We have a plethora of information for AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and all the verticals. We have getting started information, troubleshooting, and um, learning, as well as service packs. So before we get into the agenda, we have a couple of quick polls for you that Dave is going to run, if you could help us out with those. Yep, thanks Ashley. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, start the first poll here about uh, whether or not this is your first um, time at a, one of our webinars. And it looks like uh, like most of our webinars, uh, most of the folks here have been to one of these webinars in the past. So welcome back. And for those that are new to the webinar, thank you for coming. And uh, I'll go ahead and close the poll and then share my results here. So you can see about 94% have been to one of these before and 6% have not. Uh, and then the next poll I want to run is just uh, which application people are using. So are using AutoCAD, LT, uh, or one of the verticals or something completely foreign to Autodesk. <laughs> we'll see uh, kind of what people are running. And uh, it's looking like the majority running AutoCAD, about a third running LT and a third running one of the AutoCAD verticals. So we'll go ahead and shut off that poll here. So you have about 41% AutoCAD, 27% LT, and 16 using one of the uh, one of the other of the verticals, so architectural MAP, et cetera. So uh, go ahead and uh, hide that. And uh, with this, we'll go ahead and pass it over to Naman and let him start the presentation. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to present today and uh, I'll be covering some uh, template directions. Let me ch uh, switch my screen here for a second, you know, those awkward moments sometimes we have. Uh, and, and one second. Okay, so I hope uh, we can see my screen now, uh, hopefully. And uh, so today uh, we're covering basically uh, the idea of creating a template for your office or for a project or a client. Um, I deal with this uh, uh, all the time with uh, coming up with uh, standards for our company or other companies. But uh, basically where we need to start first is planning. What standard are you going for? Uh, where you are located, every geographic uh, area has their own standards. UK has its own. In this case, I have this web page open. Those links are in the uh, document, by the way. And uh, city will have their own CAD standards. States will have their own standards. Uh, in US, we at least have the United States National CAD standards, but that is basically a guideline. And I will be following on that idea. So the first planning is basically layers. Um, you need to make sure what layering you have. And then you get into uh, different types of text styles. We get into dimension styles. Um, 
and other block symbols and whatnot. We're not going to cover symbols anything, but uh, the idea would be is to pre-populating your documents, uh, having a document that everybody can start from that has the settings correct <laughs> from the get-go. So um, by no means this is all-encompassing. Uh, I'm trying to try to cover as much uh, as I can uh, today. So first and foremost, uh, let's get into AutoCAD uh, and we're decided that we're going to have a, a standard. Uh, typically, I'll have my company sheet and page override set up. Then I'll have, if I start my new project, um, I will have my company model text, a uh, model um, and a separate sheet. And I re the reason I do it is just it makes it a little bit easier to uh, have page setup overrides. You can incorporate the two together, but I'll show you a workflow that when we get into plotting might uh, makes a little bit more sense um, when we get to it. So first and foremost, to basically start a template, you need to decide which uh, format you're going to go with. In this case, I'm going to just start with the plain AutoCAD.DWT, uh, which is the basic uh, most template. Uh, the biggest change recently has been is that they have switched files when we get to it to Arial, uh, to uh, true type formats instead of the SHX. So once my uh, drawing is started, the first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be um, the options. Um, well, why about options? Well, the options are important because they control uh, what and how you are presented with your template. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to my options and I, in the command bar I can right click and say options and under the files tab uh, if you look at all the way to the bottom it says template settings. This is where I am going to define where my templates are stored also where my sheet set template if you use uh, sheet set manager. Uh, default template file name for QNEW. So let's change that uh, because I, as soon as I hit the new button I want to start up running. So I'll change that and browse to my template directory and I will name it my company model DWT. So I'll set that and then template for sheet creation and page setup overrides. That's why I have two separate ones. Uh, you can have the same one. Uh, so I'll select my company sheet DWT. So these are my template settings that I did. There are other settings that I, you want to uh, set up. Also within the template or in your, uh, basically your profile would be your plot style table search path. In this, you will put in your CTB file for your company. I'll do that when we get to the printing. And also, if you have any custom printers uh, that you uh, have set up under the plotters, so, so the PC3 files, or those are what goes in here. Another one uh, you can also um, uh, ch want to change uh, is the under open save. You want to make sure that uh, some people like to have the Viz Retain, which is you know on our XRF webinars we have covered that Retain changes to XRF. Uh, check that and allow other users to ref edit the current drawing. So if you're working with uh, XREFs a lot, I would recommend that you have that uh, settings checked. Uh, and then um, I also set my uh, demand load XREF. So that's a profile based setting versus this icon. If you see the, the drawing icon right next to the setting, that means it's a drawing, current drawing setting. So we want to make sure that we have it set up correctly up front so we don't have to constantly change it all the time. Um, so those are some of the important settings that you want to make sure that you change. Um, the other one is if you go through those uh, dialog boxes, the system settings under there again allow long symbol file names, user preferences, and they make new dimensions associative depending how you want to do that in your company whether you like that feature or not. But uh, as you can see, what I'm trying to show you is pay attention to the, the icon, the, the drawing icon. Another one uh, you want to sometimes I change is this display resolution, which is that arc smoothing. So maybe I take it up to 10,000. Uh, so to have it apply solid fill, those are the settings. You can upfront do that. So let's click OK, because uh, I'm done with my uh, profile settings in the options. The next, uh, sometimes I 
work with um, the grid. Um, a lot of people don't. If you're in the mechanical trades, um, you, you would like to have it op on uh, in architectural. We uh, typically don't do it because uh, I sometimes have a little bit, uh, it's too much, too busy. So I'll hit F7 to turn my grid off. You can also uh, have the grid turned off using your buttons right here at the bottom. Uh, so I have my snap mode off, which is the F9, because I don't like snaps, because uh, we're building in bigger uh, scale. So depending on your um, personal preference, you can do that. But this, these are the settings that get saved with the drawing file that you are going to start with. Typically, I start with every project uh, for architectural 8-inch scale. So I'm going to set that to 8-inch. Uh, so when I start a new project, I have that up front. Um, so those are the settings uh, we'll do. Uh, one more setting that I don't know if it is in the dialogs or anything is called XREF override. And this setting, this is a brand new setting, I think in 2016, where if you say one, what it will do is in any overrides that a, a person has in, an, in the base XREF file, so if you're getting a consultant file, you want to override them to a color that you want and a line weight you want, you can set that variable to one, and then all their settings will be nullified uh, overrides. Like if it override the color of the object, it doesn't matter. It will automatically take on the bilayer. Uh, so it's a very powerful command that they added recently. So those are the some of the settings. These settings, uh, again, um, you want to talk, uh, you know, set those up up front. Uh, then um, first thing first, let's save this drawing. So I'm going to say file, save as, drawing, and here I'm going to come down and say AutoCAD template drawing since I am setting up a template file. And I'm going to say update sheet and view thumbnails. Uh, if you have some uh, information typed up or border or something, you can check that box. So I'm just going to use a short saying MYC-model here, since I already have some demo um, my company-model, and hit the Save button. So you can type in uh, your um, information here. The other things I uh, forgot to mention, I guess, or I should mention, is the units, basically. The units you want to set up, whether you want architectural. Um, I'm going to have a bias with architectural because I'm an architect by trade. So uh, let's just keep it at architectural. Um, so hit OK. Those settings are going to be saved in, this, uh, in the template file. So what happens is uh, that the Q new, if I hit this uh, new drawing button, which is the Q new, my drawing starts directly from my template that I have specified. If you notice, in this case, I have my dimensions set up already in this template. Uh, my uh, dimension styles are already um, ready to go. Um, the other settings that we just did are ready to go. So every time you start a new project, you will be that way, much easier to start. Um, and you already have those. Maybe you want to improve your template, some of the ideas that you pick up here, maybe. So I'm going to say no to this drawing, because I just started that again. Well, the setting that we did under options right here, uh, under the template settings, default template file name for QNEW is what I pointed to. And then um, I can quickly hit OK, uh, quickly hit the QNEW button and start with a file that is ready to go based on my company standards. So the next step, uh, what we do is, in this case, uh, if I look at the style command, which is the uh, AutoCAD um, text styles under annotate, text, right here is, there are two separate styles, annotative and standard. Now, annotative is the standard, and the standard is the standard always. Uh, the one thing that has changed uh, uh, maybe I don't forget, maybe 2009, 10, I forget what that, but it switched to Arial instead of the Roman, uh, the standard .tx, .shx file. Uh, which, uh, um, but the key is here, don't use standard for your standards and don't use annotative for your standards because a lot of drawings that uh, people will send you will already have standards and if you uh, open them up, 
they won't meet your standard because everybody's standard is a different standard. So that's why it's important. What I do is as a naming convention that I've uh, showed you earlier was to put in like a ac um, abbreviation of your company or something like that that identifies that those are your template uh, settings, the standards, whatnot. Uh, so I'll follow that through all those different uh, items that we will cover. Yeah, so that's the best thing, thing about standards, Norman, is that there are so many of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, and everybody has their own preference. Um, again, the idea would be is to just kind of give them the, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, hey, how about to think about different things uh, on their, when they start a project and improve their client. If they have a repeat client, you want to set it up that way, you know. So let's uh, do that. So let's talk about text. Uh, so again, this button right here, um, I'm a typer. So if I start typing, please, um, um, I'll show you where the buttons are as well, hopefully, if I remember. Uh, but this is where the style is. So let's create a new style. Uh, again, I said uh, I'll use my uh, company initials, which is my company in this case. And uh, for general text, maybe it's um, annotations, general annotations, or general, it's up, you know, up to you whatever you want to add to it. Uh, so either you prefix it or suffix it, doesn't matter as long as you have your own name associated with it. Click OK. Now this draw, uh, style is set up. I'm going to use, make it annotative because uh, I love annotative now. Um, and if you can figure out the power of it, uh, it's awesome. Um, I hated the old days of where you had this small printout stuck next to your printer where it says, oh, uh, at eighth inch the text will be 90, you know, 96 or inches tall, blah, blah, all that, or 12 inches tall, rather. Um, and uh, it just makes it harder. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave it at Arial. And, uh, Sometimes I prefer Arial Narrow in this case, uh, so I'll do that. That's my preference here. Uh, the paper text height, you want to leave it at zero because you want to dynamically manipulate that. Um, so we'll just do annotative and text height. Let me create a new, another one. Uh, so, oh yeah, I do want to save my changes. Another one would be is MC-DIMN. I use a different one for dimensions uh, style because of the fact that if I need to change it uh, down the road, it makes it easier. Uh, maybe a different font or a, a smaller font. Maybe the width factor is a little bit smaller. And just, uh, But again, you create that and narrow width factor maybe is different, but the paper text height, make sure it's set to zero. I set it to annotative again. And uh, I'm going to s say yes, save that, and under MCAN, I'm going to set that to current and close it. So now if I type work with text at this point, so I it matches my company standards right now. So it makes it so much easier um, to work with, um, to have a certain standard. So let's uh, talk about uh, the next would be the dimensions. Um, and w with the dimension, um, there are certain things I'm going to touch on um, uh, because uh, of the fact um, Let's see, so the dimension style. So before I get to dimension, I'll go to my other file here. I have uh, the style under the style textiles here. I have all the textiles set up at this point. So we'll uh, do the dimensions. So my text are MC annotative, dimension, symbol, title text, subtitle text, uh, multiple different ones, maybe different uh, width factors and whatnot. So that's what I ended up doing was creating more styles in here uh, to help facilitate my uh, text uh, down the road. Uh, so now next is the dimension. So we'll go to the, again, the annotate tab under dimensions. You click on this little arrow or you can type in dim style. And uh, basically, again, you start with standard. So, and there is another one in there called annotative, um, which I will not use, but I will start with a new. And here, I will again call it 
MCDIMN, I basically have one dimension style in my office uh, standard because I don't have, a, you know, 96, one for 48, or one for 8, one for 9, uh, you know, I've seen in the past where, you know, people hard code the heights inside the dimension, uh, which is not the way to go. Use, if you use annotative, it just becomes so much easier to work with. Um, so MCDIM, and then start with standard, okay, and annotative. So continue. So a few things, I mean, uh, I'm not going to get into the whole dimension styles. Uh, you can uh, tweak it to your um, liking. However, under symbols and arrows, I want to make sure that the leader is set to closed filled. And the sizes I'm not going to show uh, or talk about. But notice here, though, however, the sizes, since I said annotative, the sizes are based on what they plot at. Uh, you don't have to do the math uh, right now. Uh, but this is where, under the text, is what it's important. I am going to set my text to the MCDIMN uh, annotation. Maybe the text color I override. Some people like it. Some people say, no, 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 that's a, a no, no. We don't override the text. Um, it's up to your choice. Um, and they have their. The other thing I do is, if you notice, by default, when you start with a standard, it kind of looks like this, where the vertical is centered, horizontal is centered. Again, your preference. Um, notice that the um, angle is centered as well. So I'm going to do is vertical above and offset from dimension line. I, again, I don't have to do the math. It's all decimal. It will automatically multiply it based on the scale that is on there. Um, and then aligned with dimension style. So text alignment, if you want to, you can say horizontal. Different ways that you can do it depending on the standard you are working with. Uh, this is the text height. Uh, typically in architectural we'll do 330 seconds. Uh, you can do 1 8th. Some uh, states and uh, other entities require 1 8th. So you may want to think about the height of the text for the dimension text. Um, for the fit, um, I guess I'm, this is where the key is under the fit. Scale for dimension features. I'm going to set it at annotative. The other thing you can do is always leave it at 1 if you don't want to use annotative. Still, at least set it to 1. Uh, then you can dynamically update your dim scale uh, and uh, type in 96 when you are at 8th inch or 48 when you are at 48, uh, quarter inch, etc. So I am going to do the annotative. And then let's just uh, talk about Click OK. So my dimension style is set up. Uh, let's close this. And uh, I'm going to draw a quick line here. And uh, again, I was typing, sorry. Uh, dimension right here. And draw that at 100. And, oh boy, that's a huge dimension. So let's just kind of reel it down a little bit here, linear dimension. And that's yeah, that's more uh, meaningful here. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, so if I do an angle, if I do a circle, and uh, dimension that, uh, let's do this. So I'll do an uh, angular dimension. Notice that it says annotative scale is 8th inch. And uh, I don't have to worry about, in the properties I'm kind of pointing to right now, uh, you have the text height as 330 seconds. I don't even have to worry about it. It basically will automatically calculate for me all the information and the sizes and everything. So um, then let's just do the, the radius here. Uh, it, if you notice, this radius uh, is using this arrow. I just don't like that. If I do use the leader, those who are not using M leaders, uh, if I do a leader right here, uh, and I type in the text for the leader, notice that it kind of looks, doesn't you know, work for me. I, I want it in, you know, centered and all that kind of good stuff. But you know, we set it to above, so how do we take care of that. So again, quickly under dimension, 
I'm using my old, old command called ddim, which is the dim style command. Um, I'm going to create a new style for the leader and the radius here. So I'm going to say new, and I'm going to call it mc-a-d-i-m-n-radial. And uh, I'm going to start with, but here is use for all dimensions. I am going to say radius dimensions only. So notice that the name is kind of even disappeared. I shouldn't have even bothered naming it. So once I continue that, um, the symbols and arrow for the, this guy right here, I, for the radius, I want it to be a closed filled arrow in this case, let's say. And uh, for the text, um, I want it to be centered as well. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to repeat this again one more time for the leader so you can see the change. Um, so again, new. And again, start with MC Dimmon, Dim Annotative. And I'm going to say it's for leaders and tolerances. Continue. And what I'll do is here, symbols, it is still, it's already set to close and fill. For the text, vertical, I'm going to say centered. So that allows you to kind of see what will happen as soon as I update this. It may not update. I might have to use a command to do that. But let's say close. So what these are called are child dimensions uh, styles, which is basically they are sub styles of MCDIMN. And any settings that you change get overridden. So notice that now it became an arrow head as opposed to, so if I go to dim radius, it's a little bit more easier to see and follows the standard. The leaders don't update. So I'm going to do a leader command here quickly and show you. And now the leaders look really nice compared to this guy. If you have all those leaders, um, there's a quick command, by the way. Uh, it says update dimension, uh, and it will update those dimensions for you. Uh, in this case, it was not centered. But the idea is, is that any new text that you create is automatically set to that um, centered and with an arrow, etc. cetera. So, uh, so basically, the next step would be I'm going to get, get into uh, is basically the M leaders. Um, what I also did was um, under my dimension style, right here again, this guy right here. OK. Uh, so I have overrides for angular. I have for leader, linear, and radial. So I have overrides for multiple uh, different uh, items. You can take a look at how they work um, as such. Uh, so our next step is to create multi-leader styles. Uh, so again, this small arrow, where is your multi-leader style manager? And within that, you basically, again, start with the standard. And uh, I'm going to do is create a new one. Uh, again, MC, M leader, I don't know what you want to call it, maybe annotations, or text, rather. I'm sorry. I'll call it text. That's more appropriate here. Start with standard. And I am going to make it annotative, as again. So M leader types. Basically, in this case, either it's text, block, or none. You don't want to put a text for block. You can just draw a leader very quickly. Uh, block, you can have hex notes and things like that automatically placed at the end of the leader. So we'll do M text. And the text style, again, I'm going to use my, I mean, if you have an M leader text, but I'm going to make it match the annotations itself. Uh, text, I'm going to keep it horizontal. Uh, again, you can select the text height, uh, again, format it to 330 seconds, because that's what I decide when I planned my um, se uh, setup of what standards I'm going to set up. That's what I did. And it says left attachment, middle of top line. It, it tells you what different uh, looks you will have in this preview that I am pointing to right now. So the right attachment, you can um, just middle of text. You can play with those settings. Um, 
and click OK. In this case, uh, the other thing I also change in this is maximum leader point is set to two. Um, and uh, then what you do is, is basically now I can click OK. I have my text set up. I'm going to say set current and close it. Now I can start adding multi-leaders. So notice that it attached to the center of this. And the other thing, since I set it up, notice that I have only two clicks that I did in this case. So basically why that ha was the case was is in this MC text, I'm going to modify that. It says maximum leader points, say maybe three, second segment angle, you know, different settings you can set. Click OK, close, and then again, one more time, M leader. And that basically allows us to uh, click one, two, and then select how far you want to go, and then type the text. So that's kind of a very handful thing. So with all this things that I'm doing, what I have uh, completely forgotten uh, was to think about the layering because I talked about uh, the um, layers earlier where let's, which layer standards you want to follow. Um, so in this case, I want to set up a layer standard or whatnot, and I have been creating text on just layer zero, which is you shouldn't have any objects on layer zero unless you're creating a block. Um, so let's talk about the layers itself. So it, under Home, this is your Layer Properties Manager. What we have in this case, I'm going to demo what we have different, many different layers for um, a standard template that we have. So in this case, if I look at, and this is an architectural template, um, and uh, under A Wall, uh, the color is 11. Maybe the line weights are heavier, and then you, whether it prints or not prints. Uh, so we'll, I'll show you uh, just quickly how to create a couple layers, those who know it. I mean, as repeat, you know, it's just kind of boring, but uh, those who haven't seen it, maybe I might give you a, a hint or two, let's hope. So uh, in my drawing, this model, my Model T, I don't have any layers except the layer zero. So first and foremost, I'm going to say create a new layer and name it, so A dash wall, depending on the standard again, uh, the color. Uh, as much as I'm saying I'm moving on with the annotatives, I still haven't switched over to style-based plotting yet. I'm still stuck with CTBs. I don't know why, but it is the case. <laughs> and if you want to know all this uh, uh, STB, CTB, we had a couple webinars in the past few months that covered that in detail actually. So let's just say color magenta. The line weight, I do sometimes define it, the line weight I want, uh, because uh, if I, that way, if I ha use a generic uh, CTB file uh, and you don't just, some, you can mention to people, hey, just use the monochrome.ctb because w then it will take on automatically the weight of the line here if you use the monochrome.ctb out of the box. Uh, so let's create a couple more layers here. Um, sometimes I have like a, a no plot layer. I know def points, but I still want to be able to control uh, what plots, what not plots, because I can't dump everything in def points. Um, so that uh, what I pay attention to sometimes is, is that what layers I create those objects because the last thing you want is people creating all these objects on many different layers uh, and they're not uh, coordinating. So making sure the wall, you know, the dimensions go on dimensions, you know, things like that. Uh, so this is basically the setup that I have is, you know, you have different uh, line types and whatnot. So let's look at a completed picture of this guy right here. And Okay, so layers again. 
So these are my many different layers uh, that I have in this um, and it makes it easier for people to just kind of grow. The one thing that I neglected to do in this case uh, was basically the description. If you, I, this is an older template, so I don't have all the descriptions. What, um, it's nice to have the descriptions in, added in there. Okay, makes it easier to people to say, oh yeah, I know it's area boundary, but AAPPL, what does that mean? It's like appliances or something like that. So you, you can write it in that description very easily. Okay, so that covers the basics of uh, creating different styles. You can take it further to tables and uh, you can take it further to um, blocks and you have some blocks inserted. Uh, the other M leader I wanted to kind of show you um, as a just to kind of jump back to where we were very quickly and then get into plotting. Uh, under the M leader, I have another one called block. Um, and just to kind of demo that, what that does for you. Uh, basically, there is this uh, tag automatically inserted right here uh, within this uh, as a block at the end of that M leader. It's a very powerful tool. So. Uh, Let's start with, uh, so I have my drawing set up. Now I want to be able to plot different things. So I'm going to open up a uh, sample file here. Oop. Where'd it go? Oh, there. Sorry. <laughs> Aha, DWG. And uh, so let's start with this. But uh, our goal will be is I'm going to show you how I have like two separate uh, files that, uh, that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my company-model template and then further uh, make it into a sheet template. So again, as I set that QNU, if I hit that button right there, I have all my styles and everything set up in this document because I have my model.dwt file ready to go. Uh, what it does not have is all these layouts. So what I will do is basically right click, create a new layout to start with, and then uh, uh, within that layout, before I do anything like that, if you notice that this dotted line basically is the um, the margins of the paper. Uh, but before we do that, to make your life easy, I'm going to go back to, into the options. So again, right click options. And under plot and publish, by default, it says printable area. This drove me nuts all the time because every printable area for a different paper for a different printer is different. And then you are offsetting from that makes it much harder to have a consistent look. And more and more, we're using PDFs and uh, whatnot. So what I do is say edge of paper. This is a very important setting that I set up personally for myself. Uh, default devices, you can set up to DWG to PDF and hit apply and click OK. So now what I have to do is set up this sheet. Uh, so I'm going to right click and rename this. and. I'm I'll make it a 30 by 42 title block setting, OK? And then I go to my page setup manager. And here, what I'll do is I'm going to create a new layout called 30 by 42. This is a setup name, page setup name 30 by 42. And of course, I'm going to prefix it with my company name, click OK. Here, you can select the printer, DWG to PDF. The other thing is I use full bleed, but it um, doesn't matter anymore uh, since we said edge of paper. But let's just kind of keep it uh, full bleed E1, which is 30 by 42. And I love using layouts. Um, makes it so much easier. And then the offsets, I'm going to set that to 0. Uh, because I don't need to, because it'll just do 30 by 42. That's all. The other thing I want to make sure that I do is select my company's uh, CTB file. And if you notice that it's missing right here, so I'm going to just select monochrome.ctb right now, and I'll show you where to 
put your CTB files um, and uh, set up the way you like it, one to one since it's paper space and uh, look at the preview, uh -huh, blank paper, no biggie and save OK. Now I have that setup done. Now I'm going to say set it current to this layout. What that did was if you notice that it's from this edge to that edge my layout is exactly 30 by 42 and I will show you how and prove it a little bit. So let's save this file because I don't want to lose it here. So I'm going to save this as a template file and name it my company sheet and oops. Okay, and create a new <coughs> template here. And what I'll do is uh, I have some uh, settings. I'm not going to go into the detail of how, but uh, it, it is, um, let's look at those. Uh, one was this plot, plot where the plot styles are set up. So I'm going to go to my options under the files. And if I look at this guy right here, which is this uh, printer support file path, plot style table search path, I will just copy this here quickly so I know where it is. And I will paste this right here and quickly go to my folder where that plot styles are. Uh, I have a CTB file uh, for the company, this company that we're talking about which is this My Company Color Black and White CTB. I'm going to copy that in there. Now it's in the Plot Styles folder. I'm going to go back again, right click on my layout name, Paste Setup Manager, and scroll down. I'm going to modify this setting right here, 30 by 42. And here I'm going to make it My Company Color Black and White and hit OK. The reason I say color BW is because of the fact that th I can print any of the 255 colors will pl plot black and then anything that is true color will print uh, the color that it is. It's a trick if you, you want to use CTBs and the other thing is is that all the pen styles pick up the weight of the objects itself so that makes it so much easier. I can assign layers, line weights and move on quickly. So, so this is how I set up the page setup and uh, what that does allow me to do is uh, in my sheet document that I have, I have multiple different sizes that I do. So I, depending on uh, arc E, arc E1, arc E1 with the title block referenced into it. Um, so depending on uh, the, the product, project, I can easily um, bring in the right title sheet. So what I have is this A03, and I'll show you where that power comes in and how if I wanted to create a new layout for this drawing, let's say. So what, to create a new layout, right click. Before we started with a new layout, in this case, I'm going to say from template. Which template? We're going to use the My Company Sheet template. And and it says, hey, which one do you want? Um, let's just go with my company ARC E1 with title block. And say, OK. Actually, let's just do this E1 30 by 42. And what it does, it brings in that layout from this file that we just created into the file that you are in. And now what that does, let's I'm going to XREF the title block so you see it a little bit better. So attach a drawing in my external reference and I use 30 by 42. Say open and where I insert it is 00, zero and boom. Now I'm ready to plot. Why I have XREF the plot uh, separately is because of the fact that uh, we customize our oops, uh, templates uh, with different uh, names uh, of the client and whatnot, so the title blocks are different. So this makes it now I can quickly, easy to go plot. Oops, I hate this command. Plot, you can turn off unrecycle, you know, reconciling the. So notice that everything is set up ready to go because I started with the template file. So one more time I'll do that and then I, 
right click layout from template and then I select my company's sheet template and hit open and let's just do a 11 by 17 sketch say okay now I have an 11 by 17 sketch and I can go in and present my drawing very quickly uh, the other thing uh, about this uh, extra thing is, is that the problem with extra is you can't have attributes so uh, in my case what I did was I have a separate block right here uh, that is part of that sheet template that I did on the paper space so when I create a new template the paper info comes in this title block so in this drawing either it fills the information from the sheet set manager or I can manually override it so it allows me to quickly take care of that uh, text information uh, so now I can go ahead and plot that so this 11 by 17 that I just brought in I'm going to do control P again one more time <sighs> why do I do that no uh, again this is set up to be 11 by 17 DWG to PDF my company CTB everything ready to go offset is zero zero I don't need to offset it any bit because when I created my template it came out and set it up correctly and this is my quick plot that I did 11 by 17 exactly and uh, hopefully this was a, a different workflow I know you can always uh, embed that in into your model.dwt if you only use one title block no biggie uh, but uh, when you do batch publishing even uh, it allows you to quickly um, associate uh, your drawings uh, pull the data from that template that you have which is the sheet override template so every time you plot you can just say 30 by 42 doesn't matter it'll plot it correctly so with that uh, I hope this was helpful um, there was a lot of information I covered uh, between the lines. The one other quick tip, uh, since it is tips and tricks in this case, um, this is the drawing that I started A3. Um, and if I go to M, type in M text, and if I notice, if you notice, go to style. Uh, well, it brought in the other ones in, but let's let me start a new drawing that make a little bit more sense here. Okay, samples and sheet sets. Uh, so if I go to M text uh, in my styles, notice that my company styles are not there. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to insert a quick block, insert, browse, and I have my company styles and layers block that I created open, insert it on the screen somewhere. I even have a script routines that hide it, but I can just delete it. Uh, and what that is is basically a block with all the stuff in it. Uh, I'll open that file up so you can see what that is exactly. It's a jumbled mess, but uh, all it is is this guy right here. I have all my dimensions, I have my, all my M tech, M leader styles, everything drawn up in a small bunch with all my layers and uh, whatnot and uh, I just insert it into the a file that I received that I doesn't have all my information. Now I can go to my styles and have all my annotation styles, my dim styles ready to go and uh, that's about it uh, Dave okay yeah, thanks Norman. Um so let me uh, just run through a couple more slides real quick uh, and then uh, we'll do a couple of questions so uh, we just saw kind of the demonstration here um, so there are some additional resources uh, that uh, you wanted to make sure that you're aware of so there's uh, some links here to you know, the products, um, trials, um, to new features, videos, the service packs, etc. 
Um, one of the things I think that's uh, that may be interesting for folks is uh, no, okay, you're not seeing your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Let me uh, let me jump off. It helps if I change myself back to presenter. There we go. So you can see my screen now. We can see your screen. Thanks. Okay. All right. Great. So um, I was mentioning you had some links in the PowerPoint to the various uh, um, downloads, etc. Um, but um, more importantly, I think based on the subject matter of this particular webinar, is that. Uh, I put some links in here to uh, various other webinars that we've done that cover some of the topics that Naman's been uh, covering during this one in a lot more detail. So there's a couple of uh, links to webinars dealing with plotting, um, one about uh, dealing with styles, so that covers you know textiles and dimension styles, etc. Uh, one about uh, setting up layouts and viewports, and this one about layer management. So. You know, to get into the really details of all these different things that Nama's been talking about, these webinars are definitely very good as a supplement to what we've talked about previously. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you have other questions, you can uh, definitely email us uh, at the, the URL here. Make sure that you include the Build Your AutoCAD IQ uh, in the subject line, so it goes to the AutoCAD team as opposed to the Revit or the uh, Media and Entertainment team, etc. And uh, with that, let me see if I can uh, have a few questions uh, that we can pose. So, uh -oh. there, do I have to answer those too? Um, maybe. Um, okay. So actually, there, there weren't a whole lot of questions during the webinar. I think everybody was just. Uh, enthralled with the presentation, but there were a couple here at the end that uh, I think would be be interesting. Um, so there is a question about how to link client information into your sheets and uh, also um, like basically doing a plot stamp. And uh, I think both of those are um, handled very well by using fields and I don't know if you want to, to show like how you could insert a field into a piece of text or something real quick, if, if that's something that you're comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, that I'll just uh, take that title block, uh, the, the timestamp block, and uh, show them very quickly what that is. Is basically all it is is um, a, a text info, which uh, I edit the field, and I'm saying this is my diesel expression, sorry. <laughs> Uh, what the, uh, this is a, spe a language within um, uh, AutoCAD which allows us to c get some prefix, you know, drawing information, uh, which is the drawing prefix, the drawing name. It also gets which layout I plotted, what time the plot was, the edit time, and then the plot time, and who else, who plotted this. So um, instead of typing in text or anything like that, what this this does is it just every time I hit the plot button. Uh, it updates uh, whoever is uh, updating uh, plotting at that time, and then the drawing name. It also gets the date and who saved, who did it. It's me in in this case. Um, so if you do quickly, um, I let me close out. Uh, Actually, so you you're not presenting at the moment. Uh, if you oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hey. How about that, Jack? I have to do it again. Okay, I'll take over. Yep. Oh, where am I? How do I do that again? Oops. Uh, come on. Make presenter? Okay. Yeah. There you go. And uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, oh, so I was throwing it up in the air there, what I did exactly. But uh, all I have is a title block stamp. Uh, and uh, in there is... Uh, a field information. The field in uh, it's an M text basically with the field inserted in it. And uh, if I double click, it is an M text, multi-line text. And you can quickly add, edit the field here. And in this case, I used a special uh, language called Diesel. 
uh, within AutoCAD, um, which is basically it's pulling all these variables. It says the DWG prefix, a variable, uh, plot time, date, uh, what format I want it in, who the plotter is, and things like that. So you can uh, look at that in the example. Uh, but quickly, if you wanted to do this, you can just start a mtext command and right click and say field, insert field. And you can, by default, there are plenty of them. So under plot, uh, you have the what's page size, the plot date, and which format you want. Uh, I mean, there's plethora of information. This was, uh, that block was created a long time ago when this information wasn't there in the past. So, and now, I, for once I, um, at, you know, plot it, it'll automatically fill in that information. Uh, I should have done a different one, so... Yeah, you could um, just do, a, like, document for the file name or something like that. Yeah, um, like, but, that's me, you know, yep. my document, my name, something yep. like that. So, as soon as it changes, it, you know, it automatically does that. So, you can use the fields anywhere you want. It works with Sheet Set Manager. That's why when I showed you the, the, the fill-in block right here, it's all using sheet, uh, just uh, a lot of uh, the fields itself. Yeah, and uh, so there was a, um, I think we have time for a couple more questions. There uh, was a question about whether or not these uh, webinars are recorded, and yes, they're all recorded. Um, I think Nauman uh, pasted in the link to the, the recordings already, so it's also going to be in the follow-up email and uh, lots of different places, so if, if you need, need to get to one of them, um, you can certainly get to the, them. We've done over a, a year's worth, maybe almost a year and a half worth, so um, like 75 webinars or so, and there's lots of information that we've uh, captured in these webinars. Um, uh, so there's a question, um, you know, if you suggest building a, a template from scratch or starting with an uh, you know, existing template, um, if you have a, already a template uh, to a certain extent, why reinvent the wheel? But uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll start with the scratch and then copy in the information that I need by just typing in the text and copy pasting it rather than starting from something that may not be, you know, that have other issues in it where, you know, because you'll have like different textiles and you can't delete those textiles and whatnot. Um, I had that issue in this case. Uh, so to to delete the textile or anything, don't have to worry about it. Just write the text down and copy paste it into a blank template if you want to recreate, you know, start fresh. Yep. Um, and then uh, I think we have time for one more question. Um, and this one's a little tricky, I guess. Um, so the person's asking, you know, they're going to be receiving some plans drawn in, in metric, basically. And, uh, you know, what, what to do, you know, if, if, should you have a metric template and an architectural template, or, you know, can you deal with just an architectural template? Uh, we do separate uh, for metric, one for metric, one for, um, uh, what's it called, um, uh, imperial. So depending, and we have other templates for clients too. So if we're working on the client a lot, uh, we create a template for them because, like, as I said, like, some of the state uh, agencies require a certain format for text even that they we use the style that they recommend you know they prescribe in a sense so uh, we have multiple templates that we go with right yeah and I, I think that's probably a good uh, solution as well so AutoCAD should convert drawings to the units that are in place but uh, it's not guaranteed to do it because depending on how it's saved. So I've got one final um, poll real quick, um, just uh, to, before we wrap it up. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch this. You know, did you learn something new today? Um, Want to see if uh, if we did our job? And I know that there's probably quite a variety of people on this uh, webinar. So you know, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> But it looks like uh, the, the vast majority, yeah, it looks like the vast majority def did, did learn something new. So we'll go ahead and close that and share. Okay, how about that? <laughs> so, um, now I can go home and sleep. Yeah, so you, so you get paid today, yeah, same as we always pay you, nothing. Um, <laughs> but but uh, thank you very much uh, for everybody for attending today. Um, we uh, hope to see you again at a future webinar. 
And uh, you know, if you have any additional questions, uh, you know, please send them in to us uh, via the email link that's in the PowerPoint and in the follow-up uh, um, email, etc. And uh, again, thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of your day.